Hello everyone, welcome back to Raise Zero Space and Curl Space Program 2. During a recent Twitch live stream, I tried to make a horizontal takeoff SSTO, you know, an SSTO plane with the 5 meter base, so a big SSTO uh, capable of carrying lots of cargo, and I was using the rapiers and nuclear engines, but I was using the heavy wings and they would just flop off on the runway. We weren't even moving. Uh, I put struts, I did everything, and it would just flop off. No, I'm not using rigid attachment yet, but maybe I will eventually, but... Uh, yeah, uh, one time it said they dropped off, but it turned out they didn't. I was able to switch to Vessel and fly it a bit, uh, but it didn't perform as well as I would like. I was going to make some tweaks, tweaks, but the very next time I brought it to the runway, once again, the wings fell off and really did. They had the dialog box and they were no longer on the body. So I gave up on that and I decided to make a plane that could circumnavigate around Kerbin. Very simple, but... In particular, I wanted to avoid using wing pieces. That was important. I didn't want any more wings dropping off. And so that was the first element in the design you see here. The second element is, of course, the Glyph engines, which are very efficient, though very heavy. Uh, but their efficiency makes up for their heaviness to a large extent. The Weasley, Weasleys, well, I mean, uh, they're, they're, they're possible, especially considering we don't have much else going on here. But I decided that this would be more interesting. I sort of had a pod racer in my head. If you like to think of them as ducted fans, I sort of thought of them as uh, similar to some things from like a Studio Ghibli movie like Castle in the Sky, where they, they tend to have big, bigger bodies and bigger engine nacelles and smaller wings. So I was going with that, and because I was thinking Studio Ghibli, which is a Japanese animation studio, I went with Sakura and painted it pink. Uh, because it's sort of that time of year, cherry blossom viewing time of year. So that is what I went with, and the goal here is minimal wings. In fact, these are all actually control surfaces. Uh, well, not control surfaces. They're the stabilizers. They're these. Because I've never had a stabilizer drop off. Uh, I've only ever had the wings fail. I never had the stabilizers fail. So I decided that we would just make it out of stabilizers. So we've got a stabilizer down here. There's, a tra there's all transitions and transforms. And we have, it's, not, it's obviously not efficient. <laughs> well, I mean, I, we could probably get away with just one of the Goliaths, basically, uh, I think. But, and I'm sure other people have done this, but I wanted it to look crazy a little bit. So we are looking a little bit crazy. And... In fact, I didn't even want these outer wing pieces, but I gave in to the fact that we might actually have to get off the ground at some point. So, yeah, I tried it out during the live stream, and it turned out we didn't have enough fuel to actually go around the world, uh, though I was pushing it a little bit. So we're going to add fuel and see how it does like that. So this is what it looks like post-adjustment after adding this tank. I've had to move the wings up and the engines up a bit and extend the bottom wing plate so that it covers more of the body in order to give some extra lift, hopefully. That's the theory. I'm assuming that having extra tanks, unless they're drop tanks, which I'm not going to try to do yet, uh, is going to produce more drag because it's more surface area hitting the atmosphere. So we're not going to bother with that. We're going to try to do it like this and make it as streamlined as possible. but. Well, you know, as streamlined as possible while using the Goliaths like this, which is not that streamlined. But yes, we will try this out and see if we can get around the world. If we could use proper wing pieces, of course, that would be a separate thing. That might give us, give us more lift and more performance. Oh, I accidentally throttled down by pressing X. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, with more lift, you can potentially save yourself some trouble. But we're going this route. Okay, trying to... Oh, I've got... Okay, there we go. Well, about 150 meters per second, it seemed. Gear up. I don't know what the optimal altitude for this, for the Goliath engines, would be. That's an interesting question. And we do want sea level. Alright, well, let's see how far we get. During the stream, we didn't get beyond 550 meters per second much. But the optimal cruise speed is another thing. What is the optimal cruise speed for this? I'm just going beyond 500 meters per second is what I want. It'll save us from keeping an angle of attack, or too much of an angle of attack. 
Okay. Oh, well, no, I want to trim a little bit better than that. And for the sake of using time warp, I'll have it on fine controls for roll. While the power from the engines is diminishing as we go up, I can hear it. So I guess we'll cruise around here. There's not much trim going on, so that's good. Probably could be improved. Hanging out about 6.7 kilometers and going to 4x. Serious, serious time warp here. Or KSP2, I mean. It is daring. We are currently here. We've used 1.5 tons of fuel. Well, trimmed out reasonably well, or at least the best we can do right now. Some, well, if we add more lift, we could probably make sure we didn't have to use so much trim or so much angle of attack and really point at that prograde vector and that would better optimize the whole situation. But still, it's sort of an interesting, funky little design, so we're going with it. I don't know about the high-placed wings. I decided to do that this time. And part of the reason for that was actually to try and get the lift, but reducing our uh, air, uh, surface area in this sort of format. So you could sort of tuck it over the engine nacelles and sneak an extra bit of lift like that. It's sort of a technique I was trying for. Rather than thrall down, I might let it, let it just sort of drift up in altitude to get better efficiency. Well, just used about one quarter of our fuel. Whoa. We're not quite a quarter of the way through the flight, but then again, we took some time to get up to speed, so we'll see. And of course, we'll get lighter. Well, maybe trim down was not such a good idea. That might have been too optimistic. Well, this thing is not going to glide very well at the end, so we're not going to anticipate much glide range with it. Well, we're halfway through our fuel, and we're not quite halfway around Kerbin yet. But of course, again, it's complicated because of the Delta V thing, but then again, we are pretty heavy compared to the fuel we're carrying. So I don't know how much benefit we're going to get by being lighter. So far I haven't felt much ability to thrall down without, you know, losing too much speed. We'll see. Maybe we can stabilize at something north of 500 meters per second just with this throttle. I don't know if there's much benefit to throttling down like this though. Well, we're getting a sunrise soon. We're definitely more than halfway around. There we go. Well, not much more than halfway around because the KSC is getting into the dark side. I wonder if they're more efficient at below Mach 1. Or whether we should maintain this 500 meters per second. All engines are designed to some optimal level. I don't know if this is particularly optimal for the Goliaths. Well, we're down to like a quarter of our fuel and I don't think there's any way we're getting all the way that way like this. I'll try lower speeds. Well, the KSC is in the dark anyway. Might as well land somewhere in daylight. So, in anticipation of the fact that this is not going to work, I will accept suggestions. But, but uh, don't suggest other engines or reducing engines. Uh, we could have more fuel, change the wing configuration, uh, something like that. But 
I'll design something separate with the whip lashes or rapiers or that business. And one Goliath, I think, I, I can see that working a little bit more straightforwardly anyway, so it's not as much of a challenge. I think that having two of them, it's a lot of drag. And we're not cheating in any way by sort of hiding that drag, right? Uh, there are ways to place it that would obscure the drag from them, but we're accepting the full drag of the Goliaths. No funny business. So don't tell me to tuck it in somewhere where the intakes would be in any way obscured. We're not allowing for that. Now whether we should have a different wing configuration or have more fuel or where the fuel ought to be, whether we should have drop tanks or not, those are all possibilities or, well, maybe something I haven't even thought of. A possibility is to increase the wing cord in this direction and sort of decrease its span, which will decrease the drag. I'll consider that. I don't know if the vertical stabilizers need to be that big or whether they're helping much at all. They are helping with the pitch. Okay, I think for our safety's sake we should try to land now rather than later. Even though we still have some fuel. I don't know what our landing speed is. We sort of took off. Oh, I'm still on caps lock. Uh, we sort of took off at um, decent decent speed. But this whole idea of using the stabilizers instead of the wings with the stabilizers being stable and not ripping off seems promising. After all, there's not much by way of their area here and yet they are doing a good job. Of course, we do have sheer power as well. Lots of lots of sheer power. Uh, yeah, our possibility of surviving this without a runway at these speeds is low, but we'll feel it out. Here down. <gasps> no failure between the Goliath and JFT eight hundred between the Goliath and the and the body. Uh, <laughs> I can strut that. I can strut that. Oh my god. Okay, well, good thing it wasn't right before we landed after a successful circumnavigation, huh? Total distance traveled 2,971 kilometers. I don't know what it means. Oh, I guess that was on the takeoff roll. High speed, 574. Mission time, 1 hour and 48 minutes, but uh, we time warped, of course. So those were the stats there. And the highest G-force is probably right on crashing. Um, poor Bob. Oh well. So altogether, we were about 800 kilometers shy of the full circumnavigation. So we'll take that into account. And quite clearly, this thing doesn't glide. Well, we'll try and refine the Sakura and see how it might be better. But I'll also have other circumnavigator designs coming up. Anyway, with this sad, sorry state, we will revert and I'll add struts. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.